There's been a recent letter that asks for a six-month moratorium on the development of artificial intelligence. There's been a lot of concern in the AI community as well as in the political community, in media, all over, that developments in artificial intelligence, particularly inspired by the chat GPT and many other transformers and LLMs that have been coming out uh, at brisk speed after the initial chat GPT release, uh, will somehow create uh, a massive problem for society. And there are you know, ideas around runaway AI where uh, AI becomes uncontrollable and sort of going back to many of the fears that people have uh, had in mind around artificial intelligence from Terminator and numerous other such uh, stories and ideas. Uh, and even at a se se serious level, uh, books like Super Intelligence by Nick Bostrom that very famously hypothesized this uh, thought experiment uh, around the paperclip factory where an artificial intelligence system is asked to go maximize the production of paperclips and it goes off and converts the whole world, including all humans, into paper clips. Uh, and it, it threatens to devour the universe because all it knows is that it has to uh, create paper clips. Of course, in a lot of these fears, there are um, strange elements of logic employed. Uh, in the case of the paper clips, on the one hand, this AI that's been fantasized is so brilliant and so powerful that it can. Uh, overcome any uh, opposition that human beings place uh, in order to stop it from achieving its objective once they realize that it's a runaway process. And then at the same time, the AI is not smart enough to understand that the pursuit of paper clips is essentially a useless pursuit beyond a certain level. So uh, the, in this thought experiment, you have ultimate intelligence and things that require a deep understanding of human nature because human nature is what you have to understand if you're going to undo every uh, barrier that humans place uh, against you. Uh, but yet, it, it understands all those things, but it doesn't understand the uh, stupidity of uh, pursuing this paperclip production process till the end of the universe. So many of these fears around artificial intelligence, even when they come from philosophers, are a bit strange uh, to contemplate. They're, they don't really make uh, too much sense. Now, that's not to say that every such fear doesn't make sense. The ones that are most problematic are where sufficiently advanced artificial intelligence, uh, things that can automate processes at scale, fall into the hands of uh, malevolent actors, those malevolent actors actually being human beings. Uh, for example, an evil dictator with a nuclear bomb. Uh, that's the kind of scenario that you have to worry about with artificial intelligence. So uh, at this point in time, what do we have to worry about more? Uh, people with bad intentions using powerful technology to create chaos. Of course, that is the history of mankind. It's not something that's hypothetical. Or do we have to worry about something which has never happened before, which is a really advanced form of synthetic intelligence somehow deciding that the best thing for it to do is to punish human beings. Uh, none of these things are clear until they become clear, but at the same time, it seems to be uh, quite interesting that every few years, these letters are written. A few years ago, back in 2017, there was talk that uh, AI is like unleashing the demon. A very famous tech personality said these words. And then there were letters written to ban the use of AI in autonomous weapon systems. Of course, some of the people involved, their intentions are good. What they're trying to do is just to create a world of peace, a world where deadly weapons don't exist. But in reality, deadly weapons already exist, and they exist not because the weapons created themselves, but because human beings created those weapons. And in many ways, uh, there's a game theoretic framework that comes into effect on decisions like these. What do I mean by that? Well, in game theory, the idea is that if you don't have perfect information regarding what your opponent is up to, but that if you guess wrong about what your opponent has promised you, then you could land up in existential trouble. So let's say that there are two opponents, both of them agree that artificial intelligence is a powerful technology and both of them agree that they will not develop artificial intelligence beyond a certain point. Well, what if one of them lies and continues the development? 
if the other party that initially has adhered to the promise now falls behind and the opponent develops very sophisticated AI to use against the adherent party, then the adherent party is dead in the water. So thinking about that, the theoretically adherent party would say, well, nobody should adhere. That opponent of mine is likely in secret developing this technology and as must I. And the reason again is because being wrong about the intentions of another opponent mean total destruction for you or a grave loss for you. So uh, as in the case of nuclear weapons, uh, this type of decision making holds and there, by the way, nuclear weapons are at least verifiable. You can fly a spy plane or a satellite over somebody's territory and you can pick up signs of uh, uh, nuclear infrastructure being developed or rockets being developed or being placed on a launch site. Uh, but with artificial intelligence, there is no such uh, detectability because, as we've seen, after all, where did ChatGPT come from? ChatGPT came from a lab with, what, 50, 100, 150 engineers with computers, and that's about it. So who's to say that a similar-sized lab working for a nation-state somewhere in a basement in a dark, you know, uh, location that no one knows about isn't developing something similar? how will we validate that such compliance with uh, treaties and promises is in play. So that's one big reason why uh, such a letter writing campaign asking for a moratorium uh, with the rather, um, I would say, misguided assumption that uh, s somehow nature of, of the nature of man will be suspended that the game theoretic foundations of such decisions will will somehow be suspended or disbanded and uh, a different view will take hold well that's never happened uh, in the history of of mankind yes there have been agreements but agreements under nuclear cover agreements um, that are more verifiable agreements on which there are carrots and sticks that are in balance and ultimately what people are trying to figure out is whether it's in my benefit or not and what price I have to pay if I violate. Uh, and then will the opponent know that I've violated? So all of these things are unclear in the case of this letter. There's no uh, real proposal as to how any of this will be put together. Uh, the other point that I'd like to make is that this letter is also um, completely delinked from the reality of the world and the current reality of the world to be specific. The world in the last many years has uh, gone in the opposite direction of integration. We are now living in a disintegrating world. Um, and many, like Richard Haas uh, of the Council on Foreign Relations, have written books on the world in disarray. Uh, this is quite evident if you look at the relationships between the two most powerful countries on Earth, China and the US. You look at the relations between Russia and America, Russia and Europe. Um, the global south and the west. In all of these areas, the integration is falling behind. And if there was an arc that carried us to globalization, now we are traversing the reverse slope of that arc away from an integrated global society. And when that occurs, you also have fewer mechanisms, less leverage, less agreement to police, to validate, to agree upon any of these types of measures. Ultimately, any human agreement at global scale requires some modicum of integration and closeness and of coming together. All of that has been in reverse gear. So once again, this letter comes at a time where it fails to see the reality of the politics in the world, fails to address the ways in which confidence building measures can first reverse uh, this type of uh, disintegration uh, that's been going on and simply jumps to uh, an undoable uh, uh, proposal. The last reason why I feel that this letter is actually not just misguided but also dangerous is, uh, first of all, it's the second uh, in a series of such letters. The first letter failed miserably and as you can tell now with uh, the conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh and the conflict also in Syria and then also in Libya and now in Ukraine. In each one of these theaters, autonomous weapons of different types, remote controlled weapons of different types that are all now rushing towards being made as autonomous as possible. All of that is happening. 
Uh, and so once again, instead of focusing effort on, let's say, developing counter UAS systems that would have actually given uh, some modicum of protection, inexpensive CUAS systems that would have protected against, say, swarms of autonomous drones, we wrote letters, uh, the letter writers at that time made a film showing swarms of drones going inside a uh, school campus and attacking students inside a class. And for all that fear mongering, ultimately the work that was needed to develop counter technologies uh, did not uh, materialize and, and occur at the scale and speed that we needed. <clears throat> With this letter again, I think it's uh, going to be a matter of the organizers having cried wolf. Uh, they have asked for something which they should know is impossible to do. Therefore, this letter and this campaign will fail. Once it fails, they have been also looking for a lot of uh, PR. So a lot of people in the world already know that this campaign is afoot. There was a measure to try and apply this moratorium. The moratorium has failed and clearly there might not be much merit in, uh, in this uh, approach. And that broader approach, not in terms of moratoriums, but in terms of constructive activities that can de-risk better tools, investments in tools, joint investments across countries in developing safer systems, uh, investments in each other's companies that give some visibility, that form uh, a network where there is some insight into the work that's happening globally and therefore it acts as a confidence building measure. Practical things as opposed to uh, a moratorium. So these are just a few of the reasons why I feel that uh, this letter is um, misguided, uh, is, is more harmful than useful. Uh, many of the people that have signed this letter, of course, have the best of intentions. Uh, they, of course, want to see a safe world uh, emerge. But many of the people, unfortunately, uh, are also probably looking for uh, you know, their time in the PR light. Um, or have a very limited understanding of the issues and are jumping on somebody else's bandwagon. So for the future, I think we should do better. And instead of talking about uh, moratoriums, bans and letters, we should talk about technology, tools, joint investments and shared goals that are bound by, again, shared investments and uh, uh, na national alliances, organizational alliances, things that are powerful and strong in aligning incentives as opposed to uh, creating a situation which is um, e essentially not implementable. So anyway, those are some thoughts on this recent uh, campaign and I will see you in the next video.